Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group assistance sessions putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Developing My Loving Self group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the session one review, conclusion and homework, Jesus reviews and concludes the Understanding My Loving Self two-day session and gives some homework to the participants for the following break day. Recorded on the 22nd of May 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Okay. Well, we come to the end of our first session. <laughs> and we're going to just have a bit of a review of what we've, the three main conversations we've had over the last two days. And then um, we're going to give you your homework for the, for the day off as well. Yeah. So have you feel, feel, do you feel now that you understand your unloving self better? Yeah. yeah. Have an insight, insight in the unloving self, on the unloving self? Yeah, that's, that's uh, hopefully the case. <clears throat> Can you see basically from our previous discussion that we really need to learn to accept our unloving self? It's like, it's almost like loving your unloving self. <laughs> it sounds a bit funny, but, but that's really what you need to do first. You need to sort of feel like, oh, well, you know, this is how it got created. You have some compassion for that, understanding about that. This is, what, this is how my pain got created. This is how my facade got created. And coming to the point where you accept it, you know, that you, and, and that you can be compassionate and understanding of it, which is really loving it, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't mean that you uh, love it enough to keep acting on it. <laughs> it just means that you love it enough to desire. You see, you see and understand it and you desire to do something about it. Okay, well, let's cast your mind back to yesterday morning. You remember yesterday morning? <laughs> <laughs> so much has happened in... <laughs> yeah. <coughs> The reality is you've actually only heard three hours of material. <laughs> three hours of sort of presentation, you know. But it feels like more than that, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's sort of... And, and this is often the case is that, you know, as I said, we could spend a lot more time on some of this material. But, but at this stage what we wanted to do is give you a pretty... Uh, a sort of a basic overview, enough for you to work with in your day-to-day -day life enough for you to take action on in your day-to-day -day life. So if you cast your mind back <laughs> to yesterday, we introduced our whole Education in Love series with, the second, with our second presentation, which is the Developing My Loving Self part of the presentation, this group, and we reminded you in the introduction of some basic things about your will, remember that, to, to remind you to make sure that you develop your will. You can see here in this, in this map here, down the side of the board here, it's all about your will, isn't it? So you see how the first presentation had a large bearing on what you're going to be able to do in this second part of the series in terms of developing your loving self. We also reminded you that we want to connect with the source and, and it's only ourselves that are preventing the connection with the source. So connecting with God, it's only yourself that's preventing that connection. God wants the connection. God desires you. God loves you. God cares about you. God understands you. God wants the connection. And it's only you that's stopping the connection. And it's very important to understand that. That's why we've got to spend this week of time understanding how we're stopping the connection. Makes sense, doesn't it? And then we got to the, uh, the first presentation of the morning, really, which was, can you remember its title? Creation of my pain. Yeah, The Creation of My Pain. And there were basically um, three primary sources 
that created your pain? What were those three primary sources? So it's my so sources. So we just put this in here of pain are my sin. Yep. Parents' sin. Yep. And society sin. Yep. In, and society, including spirits, yes. Okay. Now, in, in my sin area, and this applies to the other areas too, there's three primary areas where we've sinned. What were those? So the, it was three relationships. So it's the God relationship, the self relationship, and the other's relationship. Correct. All right. So, so they are the main areas. And, and remember I said to you that... Sometimes the hardest area is the self area, <laughs> actually, the self area. Yeah. Sometimes that's the hardest area. The reality is that the God area is going to be your hardest area. <laughs> but, but before you can really connect to God, as we're learning, there's a whole heap of things you have to do with self first. So that's, that's the self area. And, and particularly, it's, this, it's learning how to love yourself. You know, it's like for most of us, loving ourselves is avoiding our, you know, getting our addictions met. It's loving ourselves, you know, and 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 we need to understand. No, that's not loving yourself. It's like flip side of a lot of the things we believe. So it's quite difficult. Yeah. Okay, we looked at the sources, and then we looked at the causes. And basically, what we did was we grabbed these relationships. Didn't we? We put them underneath here, that how those relationships have been distorted, and then we examined how the distortions occurred in those relationships. Right? And it's so the distortions of those relationships, the, the hurt that we feel in those relationships that cause our pain. So we're we're quite hurt in our relationships with God. We're quite hurt in our relationships with others, and we're quite hurt in our relationships with ourselves even. And by ourselves, remember, we have to also consider our other half. You see? And this is something we'll be talking a lot more about in the next, um, in, the, in the last session. I just need to have a cough. Okay. Now that was the main things that we discussed there. Uh, we also examined the types of pain though, didn't we? And, and remember, we compared all the different types of pain in that session. And, and we looked at the primary types. And some of them have to do with sort of a feeling of I'm better than other people. And some of them have to do with a feeling I'm less or worse than other people. Like there's a combination. And sometimes in one person, and most of the time in one person, there's I'm better than other people in this and I'm worse than other people in that. You know, it's a, it's a combination of things depending upon the subject. And it depends on how we've treated as to what subjects cause us to feel that in different areas. So after having that discussion, I still feel for the majority of you there's a lot of awarenesses that need to occur there. But, but those awarenesses won't develop until you actually get to feeling your pain. And, and in some ways it's sort of pointless discussing uh, more than that about the subject of pain until you actually get to feeling the actual pain, you follow? And, and once you start feeling the actual pain properly and particularly get through these barriers and feel the pain, you, you will find that, the, um, that you can, you'll understand a lot more about the creation of pain, where it came from, how it happened, you know, the intricate parts that have been created through, through your personal experience. And every single person is different too. Every single person has different pain in these areas because you've had different experiences. So you can't just assume that you know, you, you, the person you're talking to has, understands what you feel. And in fact, in some ways, you've got to give up hoping that someone else understands what you feel. And in fact, the need to have somebody else understand what you feel is an addiction in itself that prevents you from experiencing the pain properly. Right? And what I've found is once you give up needing somebody else to understand your pain, 
you have a much better capacity to feel it for yourself. Yeah. Does that make sense? Good day. Is there any things you'd like to comment about that particular discussion before I move on to the next? Everyone's good with that? Yeah. And I feel that, you know, as you as you after you've deconstructed the facade, the pain will naturally come up. And and what I find personally is that you understand things a lot better then. You, you understand your life a lot better, how things happen, what happened. You, you remember your life a lot e more easily as well you know, during that phase because a lot, of, a lot of your memories are tied up with your pain. You know, so you shut down the memory, you shut down the pain. You shut down the pain, you shut down the memory. So a lot of memories come back to you that you thought, oh, I didn't realise that happened to me, but now that I remember it, I do remember it happening. But, uh, but you shut down the pain and therefore shut down the memory. And you, so, yeah, there's a lot of things that will happen when, once we go through that pain. But it's good to understand the sources of it. And it's very important that we understand some primary factors, and that is, firstly, that we ourselves are the major contributor to our pain, that the pain that we ourselves have created is going to be the most difficult to release because God can help us with the other ones easy enough. It's just the one where we need to engage our will about ourselves that well, uh, is the most difficult one to engage. And it also, it, another thing to remember is that it's all about happiness in relationship. You understand? Like relationship with God, relationship with others, relationship with self. This is where your primary happiness needs to, will come from, these relationships, right? And particularly the relationship with God is going to be the source of most of your happiness. And then the relationship with yourself and the other half of yourself is going to be a great source of happiness. And then the relationship with other people will be a great source of happiness. But because they are great sources of happiness, the flip side is when that's unloving, they're also great sources of pain. And that's, that's something for us to reflect upon. You will actually learn a lot of lessons in love when you start feeling your pain. And, it, and it's your pain that prevents you from learning lessons in love. Because your pain has a whole heap of false beliefs about love. And that's what prevents you from learning lessons in love. So a lot of lessons in love will just escape you until you feel pain and work through pain. Okay. So, so then we came to our second talk in the afternoon. So now we're talking about the afternoon yesterday. And the subject of that was? The creation of my facade. Yep, this one we'll probably remember. Just write that down. Yeah. Now, for most of you, most of you felt quite good about that discussion, didn't you? Because it because it helped you have some compassion for yourself and how all of these terrible things got created inside of you, isn't it? Yeah. And this is very good. Very good. You must have compassion for oneself. Working through any emotion requires compassion with oneself, in fact. So the more you punish yourself, the more you attack yourself, blame yourself, the less chance there is that you'll actually deal with an emotion. Yeah. Okay. okay, so what did we cover there? Can you remember? It's in those notes of yours if you want to. Even in the homework area that you've got, you've got. So, Rob, thanks. Just if we use a mic, yeah. Uh, we're taught to fear our pain. Yeah, so we're taught. So this, this was the first thing we, is about what we're taught. We're taught. Uh, just, oh, I might use some colour. I should throw away that pen so I don't use it anymore. We're taught. To fear pain. 
<laughs> in fact, you know, if we're honest, we're terrified of it, right? Let's face it, most people would prefer to die than feel pain. Isn't that true? And they do. And they do. Yeah. 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 So this is an interesting thing. That even our own deaths are created by our fear of pain. It's interesting. So we're taught to fear pain. Again, the main teachers of, uh, are basically our upbringing and our society in which we live, isn't it? They are our main teachers. Of course, our guides in there somewhere trying to go, and our guardians in there somewhere trying to go. Hang on a sec, hang on a sec. <laughs> but but because of someone we can't see, and usually someone we can't feel very well by the time we're even a young age, uh, we have a tendency to ignore what they're saying to us, and and we have a tendency only to listen to the ones that are where the imperative is, and that's the threat of the violence, isn't it? The threat, the threat of violence, the threat of being attacked, the threat, threat of being abused, and so forth. The, these all have an effect and we're taught in two ways. One way is by the example of the parent or the society. So you see it modelled, you see the behaviour and the feelings all modelled and, and it's the feelings that have the effect on the, uh, on the child who can't reason yet, mostly. And, and so there, everything's modelled, so there's the example being imposed upon you. And then the second way is that... Uh, we're actually physically <laughs> controlled and you know into into these methods as well so so it's not only just modeled but we are personally controlled by the people who are modeling it because because they want to avoid their own pain and they need us to avoid any pain to help them avoid theirs so yeah we're taught to fear it. <coughs> big problem big problem it's amazing what happens to you when you start realising that you can cope with any pain. Yeah, It's just amazing. And once you don't fear it, it's amazing what happens to your body even. There's a whole heap of uh, things that you ne then have control over in your body that help you actually not feel pain anyway. So it's the, the, weir it's the weirdest thing. You, you go through this uh, transition where your, your, your natural body pathways when you actually experience pain can be turned off by you once you have control over it. But the fear of pain means that you can't turn them off. Weird, eh? Yeah, so it means that, it means that you, if you're afraid of pain, you won't be able to turn them off and you'll feel the pain and it's intense and it's, it drives you nuts even, can drive you nuts. But once you no longer fear pain, no longer have a terror of pain, now you can actually have control over your body's reaction to, to physical uh, pain in particular. Amazing, huh? So in the first century, when I was uh, about 32 or 33, uh, it was about uh, six or seven months before my death, um, I was the Sanhedrin tried to assassinate me, and they what they did was they got a guy, an assassin, to come along, and he stuck a sword straight up underneath my rib, right up, nearly touched my heart, because um, that was the way you did it, right? You get, get bypass the bone, and um, yeah, and I healed it straight away. He ran off with some of my so-called friends chasing him. <laughs> And, uh, and I healed it straight away, but, but in the process of healing, because I didn't fear the pain, I didn't feel much pain either. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Sometimes I say interesting, but I don't know if you're interested. <laughs> Okay, so, so we were taught to fear pain. What, what happened then? I made a choice, right? I chose. Now, of course, that you could say that that choice is sort of almost like we're predisposed to the choice, aren't we, by now, because we've been taught. So now we're predisposed to, to doing the same thing as we've been taught. Unfortunately, and um, 
And so we now really are... It's sad, isn't it, how in our childhood we get taught a whole heap of things and then when we're removed from our childhood we continue teaching ourselves the same things even though those things are detrimental to to our development and our understanding and our, our, our relationship with God and our relationship with ourselves. We, 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 it's like, if you, you know, once you're taught things in your, in your youth, it's, um, it's very hard not to continue the education in the same vein when you're an adult. Okay. Then what happened? Yeah, so now I got some techniques going. Techniques, because, you know, it's pretty hard to avoid these feelings, so now I need techniques. Techniques. What are those? What are some of those techniques? Lying to self, denying, blaming others, blaming yourself. All the things we've mentioned, right? All these techniques. And, and we get real good at them, right? Don't we? It's like, and they're real hard to give up, aren't they? Like, have you noticed that? Gee, it's so hard to give up sometimes. Because it, it, they're driven by the imperative to avoid the terror. That this, this layer here, the, the imperative to avoid the terror, drives this incessant need to live in this area where we've now got all these techniques at play. And, and like I've mentioned to you many times before, we're like, uh, there used to be, as I've mentioned, there used to be a type of uh, phone system. Um, the, the very first type of phone system was a selection type of phone system where it used to go clonk, 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 clonk. Not the phone itself, I mean inside the exchange. They used to go clonk, 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 and then they'd select the pathway, you know. And uh, I forget the name, it's not crossbar, it's before then, but um, what they used to, uh, that's what we're like with our emotions, like clonk, 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 oh, yeah, I like that one, keep with that one, oh, that doesn't work anymore, clonk, 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 and we go to another one, clonk, 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 you know, <laughs> it's like we're selecting all of these, we, and we go from one to the other, when that doesn't work, this one, we try this one, if that doesn't work, we try this one, we usually have 10 or 12 favourites, and we just scan between which one's going to be the most effective at the time of our techniques. <laughs> Barbara gets a giggle out of that. <laughs> I just realised. <laughs> you want to write the, you, you want to have the mic? What, what's amused you so much? I want to know. <laughs> it just reminded me of the time when I tried about half a dozen with you in 30 seconds and none of them worked. <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> and I was looking for more. <laughs> they just weren't going to work. Oh, it's a pain, isn't it? it? When somebody, somebody, somebody doesn't let you get away with that, and all that, or that, or that, and now you're down at the dregs. You know, like <laughs> what I you couldn't do now? think of any more, and I'm trying to quickly, quickly think them more, more, more. <laughs> yeah, I just had to walk away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty slimy, aren't we? It's, it's like. Clunk, 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 clunk. One of the things, though, AJ, that we haven't mentioned in the techniques mm -hmm. is, um, and I don't know if it's a technique, but I'm, I'm sure I use it, like I'm a workaholic. Isn't that a technique? To busy yourself, yeah, certainly it is, yeah. certainly. It's a big big one, actually, isn't it? You know, it, there's quite a lot we could list, really. And the, the, key, the key in terms of your own self-analysis is to, is to allow yourself to see what are your favourite ones. And then the really challenging thing is to take them all away and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you did that day and I went into panic. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing was, you recognise them all and I still don't recognise them. Yeah. It's easy for a person who is sensitive emotionally to, once they've worked through their own pain, to be able to see every technique you're using. Yeah. In fact, there's some good examples of that too in the Robert James Lee's material, isn't there, where the educators of Afra show him the different techniques that different people are using at different times. And it, and it is quite easy to see, see them actually um, once you're open to that. And so usually when I'm in a discussion with a person and they're a bit open, I, I don't allow them to use any of them. And, it, and that's what causes a lot of confrontation, obviously. And some are friendly about it, like you are, and others are not very friendly <laughs> about it. Yeah. But it is an interesting thing we do. It's like 
we're so rapid in terms of saying, well, that's not working, so I'll just try this, and that one's not working, so I'll just try this, <laughs> that one's not working, I'll just try this, you know. And then when we find one that works with a person, that's the one we use. Yeah. Okay. Okay, what, what, uh, what else did we discuss in this section? Uh, we, we briefly mentioned... Yeah, so, so we talk about a lot about some personal responsibility to deconstruct it, and, and that is developing the aspiration for the four tools, isn't it? And that's, uh, developing the aspiration is having a desire to use these tools, having a desire to develop some faith, having a desire. So at this stage, we might not have developed faith. We just first need a desire to develop it. And, and we might not love truth, but we develop a desire to love it. And we might not take much action in our life, but we develop a desire to take the action. And we might not uh, experience much emotion in life, but we start working through developing a desire to feel, trying to develop uh, a desire. And remember, all that's under our control. That, that's, that's our exercise of our will. We have control of that. In fact, God is not going to force you to do any of it, because to do so would be to break the gift that he gave you. To, and he's not going to do that. He would be breaking his own laws if he did it. Okay, so, we, so then we looked a bit at the attitude, didn't we? Um, sorry, that was this morning. I'm just skipping. So uh, that was basically the primary things that we discussed, wasn't it, in that, in that section? And, and can you see, after you started to understand your facade a bit more, you, you had a bit more compassion for it, right? A lot more, yeah. And, and many of you felt like, oh, you know, I've been looking at this all pretty negatively, really, and, and it hel helps dispel some of that judgment, doesn't it, that you have? And can you see that's how I see it? Like I just see it like, oh, there it goes again. So when Bob did the selector, I said, there's that one, and there's that one, and there's that one, and there's that one. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's okay. Like it's okay to face the fact that you do it. Now... To, to stop doing it, of course, is going to require other things to occur. But at least facing that how it was created is going to help markedly. Okay, and then we came to this morning, <coughs> which was the subject that we've just finished really discussing, and that was accepting my facade. And here... We've learnt through the course of the morning and the afternoon that actually this is the area of danger. This is the area where we're probably going to give up God's truth if, we're, if we don't have the right attitudes and develop some faith. This is the area where we're probably going to fail if we're going to fail anywhere right? in terms of practising God's truth. Okay. So what did we learn about the acceptance process? What, what, what firstly is the state of the facade? There's two primary desires of the facade, what are they? Well, let's look at the first one, it's to desensitise to pain, isn't it? Yeah. And then the second one, of course, is avoid the emotion. Right. Yeah, avoid the emotion of terror. And then we saw that due to those particular things, the, the facade sort of was living in a state, wasn't it, of lying to self, lying to others, not wanting truth. All the subsequent results, which are all created up here, are all the result basically of these two particular problems. Yep. So, of course, if we're going to, to accept our facade, we're going to have to accept this is what we're doing. Uh, accept that, wow, yeah, when it comes to pain, I just don't want to feel it. When it comes to terror, I definitely don't want to touch it as an emotion. You know, I'll talk about it or whatever, but I won't, I won't feel it. So, so, to me, even if you just take that two things away from that discussion... Right, and you learn to accept like that this is what you're doing. Th that would be fantastic. 
if you could just take those two things away. Mm. Okay, and then, uh, then of course that creates our facade state and to remove it, uh, to, to accept our facade, we have to accept the state. We have to accept that this is what we do. This is how we are. This is what's going on. We have to accept it. what's the attitudes we need, the attitudes of no judgment. Right? We, we have positive attitudes we can develop towards our acceptance of our facade and also negative attitudes about it that we need to remove from ourselves, don't we? Right? So what kind of negative things do we have that we need to remove to, towards our facade? Yeah, so judgment, big one, isn't it? You know, things like shame about it and all those kind of things. All and then we get into the self-punishment areas, self-attack, self, self abuse, uh, and then we get into the uh, others areas, don't we? Which is like attacking others, attacking, <laughs> abusing them for exposing it, and so forth. So these are things we need to remove from ourselves if we're going to have any chance of accepting our facade. And then there's positive things that we had to do too. So what are, what are they? Have compassion and understanding. Uh, it helps when you know the truth, right? So that's another thing. We've got to learn to love the truth, desire the truth, seek the truth. Anything else? Uh, a willingness to see. A willingness to see, yes. Yep. Dealing with that. We talked about courage and we also talked about how courage really comes from a deep faith in God and God's goodness that God, you know, that you can do it. You know, many of us enter this phase and we go, oh, look, it's just a mountain <laughs> of crap. <laughs> and what chance have I ever got of ever removing it? And then, and then our faith is pretty low and we go, yeah. Then, then we enter doubt, cynicism. You know, it's all stupid. What's the point? You know, no one's ever done it. Even AJ's not done it. <laughs> you know, and then we then we get so so we get so complicated about the whole thing that we give up before we even begin. Really, yeah. So obviously, faith is a key part. Truth. The four tools are very key parts, are they not? At taking some action. Having compassion and love, uh, feeling, allowing yourself to feel the emotions that you feel. Remember, we also talked about in there, in the in the feedback I gave you. Remember to disconnect our worth from hearing the truth. You know, we need to see how, you know, we we still have this investment that if we hear something good about ourselves, that it means we're worth something, and it doesn't. It just means that there was that particular thing that was good. From God's perspective, we're worth something even if we're really bad. <laughs> That's relieving <laughs> to know. Yeah. If we go Evan down here and Bob on this side. Um, just when you're reviewing this, and, and yesterday it was as well, how everything builds on itself and just gets bigger and bigger and worse and worse, and you've got this calamitous sort of situation which does make it look. Um, yeah. Hard to handle. But I have some hope, I have some faith that if we start in the positive direction and start accepting our facade and wanting to work through our um mm. our terror and our pain that it that, that will get better and mm. and better. Mm. But it, you can yeah. see it really goes down to two primary decisions. The primary decision to avoid the desensitized to pain. Yep. And the primary decision to avoid the emotion of terror. Yeah. They really are our two primary problems. Yes. And and, and it's amazing the monster we create mm. just avoiding those two things. Well, in the same way that we started off with the sin that was done to us and then created it, the more we tried to avoid pain, the more and more sin we created. It just got worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And this is why uh, after a while you learn that pain is a really good thing to always feel when it happens. Mm. And, th and that's something you learn. And, and in fact, uh, once you become a celestial spirit, um, every emotion that you feel, you feel in the moment that it happens. 
you know, nothing's ever delayed. And, and, and in fact, to become a celestial spirit, you have to get to that point that you don't delay the experience of any emotion, positive or negative. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, but Going back to this point of um, worth and truth association, mm -hmm. um, so would feeling the emotion of worthy, worthy less, worthless, um, would that be a key to accepting personal truth? Um, well, I feel there's no such thing as an emotion of worthlessness. No, and there's not from God's perspective either. But if somebody has that emotion in them... No, I'm saying the emotion of worthlessness, what, if we feel worthless, it's because of how we've been treated. And that's all about being abused and attacked. So your worth is created by how you've been treated. And, and the key with feeling any sense of unworth, uh, lack of worth is, is to actually feel that you've been attacked and cry and grieve about the attack that's occurred that was unwarranted, do you see? And, um, and then we, yeah, when, when we do that, we start, to, we start to disconnect the concept of the fact that somebody else attacking us means we're not worth anything. Right? And, 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 but that is separate to this issue of connecting connection between truth and worthlessness. That's something we can do before then. Do you understand? No, I didn't get that. Sorry. When somebody attacks me, I don't, I don't feel that it's my fault they've attacked me. Yeah, but if you have the emotion in you that you... I still have the emotion in me. Oh, you still do. Yep. That's what I'm saying. You can, and if someone tells me the truth, I don't think I'm being attacked. I think I'm being loved. So, so it really, what it really means is that you've got to start to, you've got to get to the point where you believe and you feel within yourself that, that someone telling you the truth is an act of love. Right. And that's and that you can do that before you feel, before you work through any worthlessness emotions. You, you can make the disconnection. It's like, it's it's very similar to the, the thing I discussed with you in the first group. Remember, we talked a bit about how how we treat God is really about how our parents how we view God is really about how our parents have treated us. Right. And I said to you that you can separate the two even without working through how your parents have treated you. Right? You can stop joining God with it. Well, the same goes with truth. You can stop joining your worth to it. You follow? Because truth, truth is not about your worth. It's just yes or no, false or true. It's, it's a statement of fact. It's like, like if I talk to you about the law of gravity... You have no emotional worth connected with that. So I can talk to you about the law, a physical law. I can talk to you about it, most of the physical laws without you getting stressed at all. That's why you can talk about universal you know, laws that are not a part of you and, 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 and all of you are fascinated and you love it. Right? But as soon as I involve you in the truth, now your worth matters kick in and that's what we've got to disconnect. We've got to disconnect our worth from hearing the truth, you see? It doesn't mean that we're not going we, to we, be able to let go of all of our worth issues because that's not going to happen until we feel our pain. We're not going to be able to work, let go of all our worth issues, but what we are going to be able to do is separate our resistance to truth from worth. Do you understand? A bit. Yeah. 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 In the same way that we would separate our resistance to God from our resistance to our parents. Right, because they can be separated. I got it on God and parents, but I didn't get it on this one. Yeah, it's very important to understand that that if we have worth issues associated with truth, we can separate those two issues by processing just one emotion generally, without having to work through all of our worth issues. It's the emotion associated with somebody telling me the truth and feeling like I'm being attacked, and that emotion is linked to our childhood where we were attacked by people telling us the truth about ourselves. Do you follow? People having the desire to just tell you the truth about yourself to harm you. Like, my mum does it all the time. <laughs> she comes in. Oh, your hair's receding a bit. 
It's been receding, like it's been at the same point for years and years. It's receding a bit. Why, why do you have to tell me that, Mum? It's like your bum's getting fat. <laughs> <laughs> but do, do I say that to you every time you walk in the door? <laughs> do you know what I mean? What, why, why does somebody have to do that to you? Because they're trying to pull you down. They're trying to make themselves feel better than they feel and trying to pull you down at the same time. And because of that, you've now associated pain with hearing truth. You follow? And that needs to be separated. And the way you separate it is by feeling how you've been attacked with truth a lot of your life. In order to pull you down. They're fi by feeling their intention. Do you see? Mo most of you still struggle with feeling attention because, because you've still got joined... Anybody telling the truth has a bad intention. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, and, and this is where it's not true. It's, it's just not true. The reality is sensing a person's intention is very, very different from hearing the truth from a person. A person can tell you the truth with a bad intention or they can tell you the truth with a good intention. I, I know many spirits that tell you truth with bad intentions. Many of you get manipulated by them. They say, oh, you got this facade here, yeah, you know, type of thing. And you go, oh, yeah, I have. Isn't it terrible? And you attack yourself. And that's exactly what they wanted. They want you to attack yourself. A loving person goes, don't attack yourself for it. Just see that you got it and work your way through that particular problem. Right? Examine, be honest that you have it, but work your way through it. You can do it. You can get through it. You can change. Right? It's interesting on you saying that. I can now see that I've actually also done that to other people. Of as course, well. yeah. Mary's discussed that with you quite a number because you do yeah. it quite a lot with her. Mm. Where when you talk with her about a subject, I mean, but you don't realise that your motivation is to pull her down because you feel certain things in her company, and you do it automatically. Yeah. So you got to be careful. You see, it's like it, we need to separate worth from truth. That we need to separate parents from God. There's quite a few things we can separate. And, and we can separate these things without really having to deal with very many emotions. Mm. And once we've done that, th these are global emotions. They affect every process. And we will learn more about global emotions two days' time. And they affect every process that you go through. Once, you, once you've dealt with the global emotion, it relieves you from a whole heap of resistance to dealing with a whole heap of things. It's wonderful. It's like... The best way I could liken is a global emotion is like a cover over a lot of things. And when you remove the global emotion, now all those things are exposed. Yeah, that's really good. So, yeah. Okay. So how do you feel about these couple of days? Yeah? You thought they might be a bit negative, but they've been pretty positive, right? Yeah. Very helpful. Okay, well, let's come to our homework. You've got it written down in your outlines if you've got them with you. There's basically five questions. So uh, what we'd like you to do is to spend some time on these questions. And you're better off doing one thoroughly than five badly, aren't you? So first one. What lies do I tell myself about myself? <laughs> That's a pretty hard one to answer, actually. Very hard one to answer. You'll find you'll find you have some difficulties there answering that particular question. <coughs> and by the way, your lies about yourself can be negative as well as positive, and that's something I'd like you to be reminded of. A lot of you think the lies about yourself are sort of positive things you tell yourself that are actually quite, you know, re in reality got quite negative. But the reality is also that many of you tell yourself negative things about yourself that are actually quite positive. And they're still lies. Do you, do you understand what I mean by that? Okay. Okay. Um, here's a... Positive thing about yourself that many of you believe is negative. You can see my negative emotion written on my face. Now that's a good thing. 
not a bad thing. But you tell yourself it's a bad thing because other people can read it and then they act upon it. And you say you tell yourself it's a bad thing, but it's a good thing. Right? Another example. Um, I can't stop myself from expressing my joy about something and everybody laughs at me. It's a good thing that you can't stop yourself from expressing your joy. And if everybody laughs at you, isn't it their unloving choice? But see, many of you tell yourself that's a bad thing, so you've got to modify it. You've got to make it different to so fit in with society. So, so you see what I'm meaning? There's some things that you think about yourself right now where you're telling yourself a lie about yourself from God's perspective. You're better than that. And then there's other things where you tell yourself a lie about uh, yourself and God thinks you're worse than that. <laughs> Do you follow? And you've got to be just as honest about the things that you're better at as the things that you're worse about. Do you see what I'm saying? Because both are going to contribute to your facade. Does he, do you get that? Yeah? <coughs> no? No? Well, Teresa, you would like to ask if we just have a mind? It's important you understand that the lies might be not just one side, but that also the other side. The lies might be that you're telling yourself that you're good at something when really you're bad at it, and then, then, you, then the other lie might be that you're telling yourself you're bad at something when really you're good at it. And both are going to be a problem. <laughs> Teresa? Does that also include things like that your parents have told you you're stupid or you're, you're hopeless or something, and you're not? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, most of you are not stupid. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Jeez. That took... That took a while. <laughs> oh my goodness. It must be late in the day. I say a joke and it takes about a, five minutes for it to gel. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so let's go to the next one. What lies do I tell myself about fear and pain? My fear and pain. Now this is a big area, you'll notice it's a big area where you're constantly feeding back to yourself, no, it's wrong to go there, I can't go there, no, it's bad to go there, all these different things you're telling yourself about your fear and your pain. So separate the fear from the pain and see what lies you tell yourself about your fear and what lies you tell yourself about your pain. Yeah. All right, remember, every time you lie to yourself, it's the worst thing you can do. You can't change if you're lying to yourself. Lying to others is a bit easier because you, you can at least see that you do it, but lying to yourself, you're not going to get anywhere if you're doing that. Right? Not that lying to anybody else is any better from God's perspective. Remember, we're equal, so lying to yourself is just as bad as lying to somebody else. From God's perspective, same penalty. Interesting, huh? Hmm. Okay, next question. How do I believe that my facade protects me from fear and pain? Very interesting question. Uh, what we need to do is uh, examine some of our belief systems. You know, like here, here we're looking at, okay, what is it that we believe, which comes from this down here, obviously, what is it that we believe that we can at least start to recognise we believe that causes me to think that my facade's a really good thing? That my, fa my facade is serving me, it, it's helping me, it, it benefits me, it's good for me. And it's good for other people too, you know. It's good for them too, you know. If I, if I wasn't in a facade with other people, I might go around murdering people, who knows, <laughs> you know. So, so I've got to be in a facade with people, it's good for them. You've got to let, let yourself feel what your beliefs are about your facade. Yep. Question four, what are my personal techniques for preventing the emotion of fear. My personal technique. So this is where, you know, we talked earlier about the selector, you know, dunk, 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 dunk. which ones do you use? Which ones do you use? What methods do you use? Work, play, you know, what kind of denials? What, what methods are your go-to methods? Sex, drugs, alcohol, physical substances of any kind and also even like things like spiritual seminars can be a can be a selecting tool you use to avoid emotion. 
you know so so what what are the tools you use what are the, your favorites you know I feel like I've got to do something but it's got to be something that I think is good for the world or me what is it that you believe what what do you what do you do to avoid fear that you think is actually a good thing right I used to be scared of cats right I know it sounds a bit strange but because they'd always give me hay fever when I was with them right so so I'd be avoiding cats, you know, not patting cats, not touching cats, you know, all these different things, not realising that actually here I was just managing something that was going on as to why I was reacting emotion, you know, like a hay fever, snotty nose, runny eyes. I'd feel really bad, you know, antihistamines, pop them down, try to avoid that. And, and once I processed through one emotion, all that went. But, it, but, if I, but if I looked at that behaviour and I said, well, that's normal, I get, I get, you know, I get hay fever from doing that, so I shouldn't, I shouldn't touch cats. It's, that's a normal thing to do, just avoid it. If you tell yourself something like that, then where are you? Way up there in denial, right? So what are your personal techniques that you're using? I, with me, it was just walking away from a cat. There was one. To avoid an emotion with my dad. Interesting, huh? All right, and the last question, what do I feel like doing when I confront the truth about myself? That's, you can see why we've asked that question because of these issues, right? What do I feel like doing when I confront the truth about myself? Do I go into self-pity, self-attack, self-punishment, attacking others, pitying others, <laughs> attacking others, you know, condescension with myself, condescension with others, you know? Judgment of myself, judgment of others, excuses, denial, justification. What are my techniques that I use to, and, and what do I feel like? This one's more about what, what, is it, what does it feel like inside of me that I feel driven to do if somebody tells me the truth? Sound good? So there's your homework. Just for tomorrow. Just for tomorrow. It's probably going to take you about half a year to do that, I mean, but we'll see how we go tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, these are kinds of questions that, that I've asked myself all the time, all the time. And the reason why we've come up with these questions is we feel these are the ones that we've used to help ourselves identify, you know, what's going on with ourselves all the time. Yeah. Well, we come to the end of the day. Thank goodness for that, they all say. And uh, we, uh, we're only 10 minutes over time, I think. Is that right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what time frame I'm on. Um, we're a fair bit over time, I should say. <laughs> fair bit over time, nevertheless. But uh, hopefully the next session I'll be a bit more tight with the timing. And, uh, and the next session, two days' time, it will start again at 10.30 in the morning on the first day. So good to, see, good to see all of you then. Those of you who have drives to leave with me, um, just put them up on the right-hand side at the back if you have drives. And um, oh yeah, all of you have picked up your drives from yesterday, so that's all good. And um, I look forward to seeing you maybe down the beach tomorrow. If you get time after you've done your homework. <laughs> I'll be there, surfing, surfing down the beach, thinking about you doing your homework, locked in your room. <laughs> I don't know if I will be thinking about that, but anyway. <laughs> that was a lie. Uh, yeah. Look forward to, uh, to discussing the rest of the material with you, actually. And, and to be honest, the, the, the next two days, the removing our, our unloving self part is going to be a very beneficial part. But, but when we get to the becoming our loving self part too, I'm sure that you're going to quite enjoy those presentations because it, there are things that possibly you haven't considered very much that we will talk about there as well. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to presenting with you the, the, rest, of the, the rest of this group the rest of the course for this week yeah anyway have a good night and uh, we'll see you see you in two days 
Thanks, guys.